Rich told me that I'm entertaining to take some time, so got a couple notes. Um, first of all, I want to say thanks to Rich and uh, UTC. Rich has been doing this for more than a decade now, and it's been really fun to see how this event's grown. It's uh, difficult for all of us to get together in the tech community in Utah, I know, and uh, it's, this event's always been fantastic. So thanks, UTC. Thanks, Rich, for your leadership. I uh, also want to give a big shout-out to Senator Hatch. This is probably going to really upset David Bradford, um, but I actually think Senator Hatch is probably the most, pr the most influential person in technology in our state. Um, <laughs> And if you think about uh, just, I was thinking about this list, these are folks that he's had come to speak to us in Utah. And I joked, to, I joked to Jeff earlier, I'm like, how many people can get you on a plane on a Friday night to come to Utah? <laughs> and uh, Senator Hatch is one of them. I don't know how big the list is, but Senator Hatch is on the list. And, um, you know, Zuckerberg came to BYU, Steve Ballmer came here, Paul Aldellini came here, Jerry Yang, Eric Schmidt, John Chambers, Mark Hurd, and uh, now Jeff. So... Big shout out to Senator Hatch. Thanks, Senator. And I think on a night like tonight, it's, it's certainly interesting for me to look back at the kind of influential moments. And uh, as I thought about them, all of them had to do with people. And first and foremost, my wife. She's been uh, unwavering in her support of me and my ideas. And, and uh, I often tell the story that has been there were five times when I was running an amateur where I laid down on the carpet and that was it. I had nothing else, couldn't figure out how to make payroll, uh, whether it was the next day or in three days. And every time she either kick me or cajole me or tell me I was the greatest and I'd come up with an idea. Um, but she was always there for me and, and um, you know, all those jobs that we created and the success that we had, none of it would have happened without Sherry. Also, um, my... And then I, th I thought through kind of chronologically, you know, my mom and dad, my mom, she definitely convinced me that you can do anything you want if you put your mind to it. My family and friends, I got four little brothers and a little sister and I had a really safe environment to grow up in and to develop confidence. And you think about friends, I got a quick funny story. My best friend, you saw him speak on the thing. I, I wanted to put in there as a joke. We should, I said we should put in there honorary co-founder or he thinks he was co-founder. Um, but uh, I remember freshman year, we were at BYU in the dorms, and me and a couple other guys were sitting around, and Adam, my best friend Adam, I call him Bra, but from Point Break, you know, Bra. <laughs> anyway, um, Adam's sitting there, and he gets this shirt in the mail, and I promise you it's the ugliest shirt I've ever seen. And, it, and he was reading about this shirt he got from his mom, and it had these pearl buttons, like, and me and my buddies are looking at him like, that's the dumbest thing, you know, but trying to act like not be offensive to him, but we're like looking at each other, and then we're talking, he puts it on, we're going to lunch, and we're talking about it behind his back, like, it's really ugly, right? Like, yeah, dude, that's ugly. It's like puke green. And um, he goes into the lunchroom there at BYU, and no less than eight women came up to him and said, that's a really good-looking shirt. <laughs> and that taught me a really valuable lesson about sales and confidence. So thank you, Adam. <laughs> um, got a lot to thank God for. Probably one of them that I'd begrudging and thankful for is making me five foot two and 78 pounds as a sophomore in high school. Think about women, you know, that are five foot two. I was 78 pounds, and um, it, it, it pissed me off, you know? And I've kind of been ticked off ever since, and it's what makes me want to work hard and prove to myself that I can be successful. Uh, next, my six daughters gives me reason to try to change the world and make it a better place. Johnny P., who was my co-founder, and he was the first person to believe in me. He was the first person to believe in me 100% in business. Uh, all the people that told us no, um, and then the people that told us yes, our first investors, whether it was Joe Oliver, who at one point when I didn't want to take his deal, I called him the godfather, he said to me, if you don't do this deal, I'm going to ask every single person in this state who I know as a favor to me never to do business with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Negotiations. Um, and then lots of other angels investors, including Fraser Bullock, who's here, who at one point when I had 14 of my angel investors come to me and said they want to have a meeting and they want to shut me down in 2001, um, and they want to take their money and go home. And uh, I went, spent some time with Fraser, and I said, you know, why don't you guys call Fraser, and he's got a message to deliver to you. And uh, he delivered the message. And then 
um, people who kept their word probably 10 different times when we were about out of money and they funded us. Um, I've also got thinking about the competition that made us better. And my wife told me I shouldn't say this, but they also provided a lot of joy when we could step on their throats and watch the life go out of their eyes. <laughs> and we did put 77 companies out of business. Thank you very much. Um, Mark Gorenberg, my first VC, that, uh, you know, he did exactly what he said he was going to do. We were scared out of our minds to take VC because we couldn't get it for so many years. And we heard all the horror stories from vulture capitalists. And Mark came in, and he did exactly what he said he was going to do. He was supportive of us. He, was, he taught us so many things. He mentored us. And he was our biggest fans. And that's, that's really what we wanted. And, and that's what we got out of Mark and a whole lot more. And then, most importantly, I'd say the, the, the thousands of employees that we had and the creativity and sweat, inspiration, devotion, innovation, and most importantly, the heart. I can cry my wife. I'm going to cry about Brett. I'm a freak. Um, anyway, I was going to say Brett, my liege. Uh, Brett is pretty funny because, by the way, biggest wasted resource in the state right now. I've been trying to recruit him for months. He won't talk to me. He's sitting there just seeing, you know, smartest guy in the state. He's not doing anything, so you guys should call him. Um, 801-361-0090. That's his cell phone. <laughs> uh, Chris Harrington, my ambassador at Quan, always and forever. Mike Herring. By the way, Mike, it's another list. I know you don't really like Utah lists, but we're on another list now. Deal with it. Um, but Mike ran a freaking tight ship and kicked butt, and thank you, Mike. John Miller, you did get married, by the way. Congratulations. Sean Lindquist, I told you we'd never go to jail. He was our attorney. <laughs> and that was always a threat. He's like, you can't put it on the press release. I'm like, why not? You're going to go to jail. Come on, dude. Um, Sherman, Wong, Ingram, Ennis, Donahoe, Wellen, Grounds, Wrencher, Carry on the Legacy, Stock, Mossberg, Frieder, et cetera, et cetera. Numerous engineers, all the unsung heroes and in uh, engineers that we had for 10 years, the young sung heroes in client services, marketing, and even the lowly HR. I love all you guys. Um, but as for what's next, uh, Kathy's giving me a kiss. Uh, as for what's next, thankfully our business is growing like 20 to 30 percent uh, per month, and uh, we should be over a million bucks a month here in the next two months. So Domo's starting to take off, but it's still a startup, so it could be zero, you know. Um, I'll just keep swinging, but I think the most important message as I was thinking about this is the lesson I keep on having to learn over and over and over and over again. You know, one of them is think bigger, and I thought Jeff Bezos said that so cleanly, and it didn't even phase him. We like to think about markets that are trillions of dollars. I'm like, what? <laughs> That's crazy. Um, but, you know, we got to think bigger here in the state. And, you know, the thing that I've always learned over and over again I meet these folks and I'm like, man, that guy's impressive. You know, first time I met somebody on the Inc. 500 list, I'm like, gosh, I'd love to be on the Inc. 500 list. And then I get to the Inc. 500 list, I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. That person didn't know what he was doing like he acted. I don't know what I'm doing. And, you know, for the younger folks especially that are in here, you know, I always think back to my high school. And if I look at my graduating class, there wasn't anybody that was 10x smarter than me, that was 10x better with people than me. And I would guess that everyone in this room feels the same about themselves. So let's go and create, you know, out of this room, out of this state, the next Zuckerberg, the next Bezos, the next Jobs. Peace out. Thanks, guys.